What's up y'all, Talon here. Today I'm going to be doing a breakdown of the strongest teams for each restricted in the Regulation G format coming into the World Championship. That is starting on Friday. I'm going to be ranking the restricteds that I believe are like kind of B tier, just basically are the bare minimum quality of restricted Pokemon you need to even have a chance to top cut. Uh, day two, the World Championship really. So I'm starting off with Groudon. So there haven't actually been a lot of popular Groudon teams. This one is one that was used to get to high ladder by David Kutesh, but they're all probably going to have some combination of Fluttermane, uh, Raging Bolt, potentially Walking Wake, and Chi Yu. They differ from Coridon teams in that they're um, basically just going for a spread move with your Sunsetter, as well as having a little bit more bulk in exchange for speed, but the lack of consistency offered by Perespis Blades can be a bit of a problem. But generally, the focus is less on the Groudon and more on the supporting cast. One of the main differences between the Groudon teams from the Crydon teams that I have noticed is that Brute Bonnet is typically a little bit more popular. Uh, this one is a defense boosting one, which is pretty cool because if you go for Tear Water, you'll still be taking less damage from Wicked Blow. It's actually a raw defense stat boost. It's not like something that Wicked Blow can ignore. So that's pretty cool. I've also seen a lot of Walking Wake on these teams with Snarl to go for Protosynthesis Speed Boost, outspeed a... Uh, Calyrex Shadow Rider, go for Snarl if they are not Covert Cloak and force them to Terrastalize, which is a cool option. And you also have some choice specs variants going for similar stuff, but going for really strong uh, Terra Water choice specs. Hydro Steams in the Sun, sometimes they will still be the speed boost, but oftentimes special attack just to maximize the damage output there. I don't want to linger too much on the Groudon teams just because they're pretty unlikely to do especially well at the World Championship, but it is the lowest ranked uh, B tier Pokemon on my tier list that I made recently, so I figured I would show off one team with it. One of the other low tier uh, restricted Pokemon is Necrozma Dawnwings. This is pretty much relegated exclusively to hard Trick Room teams with Ndidi. It's a very strong power herb uh, Meteor Beam Pokemon that can essentially knock out the Incineroars that would otherwise try to switch in or just sit on the field against your Expanding Force Pokemon, which is a cool option. And then you have Moonguys Beam to be especially strong against Calyrex Ice Rider and Calyrex Shadow Rider. Uh, even after in Calyrex Ice Rider's case, you've gone for the Meteor Beam. Oftentimes they will protect in front of that, so you'll still be able to hit them very hard with a Moonguys Beam afterwards. The rest of the team is pretty similar to the Trick Room stuff that we've seen in previous formats. An offensive Guts Ursaluna with Swords Dance to take advantage of double protects in Trick Room. A Wide Guard Gallade to handle things like uh, spread moves to get around your Ndidi's Follow Me. Basically, if someone seems to be leading that in a best of three pretty often, you can mix them up with the Wide Guard pretty easily. The Torkoal, which is your main Trick Room Sweeper of choice after the Necrozma goes down. And then as a mix up, you have the After You Sleep Powder. Lilligant that can be led with the Torkoal if your opponent is leading kind of slow. And weak to that, you can go for After You Eruption or Sleep Powder, Heat Wave or Eruption and really blow them out if they've led incorrectly. So it's a strong team. I do think there will be some people on this team at Worlds with a lot of practice with it. Um, I do think most Worlds competitors will have an answer to it though. So I'm not sure if they'll be able to make day two. Next up is a Pokemon I do think that Japan is pretty high on for the World Championship. I'll start with the earlier uh, metagame variant of this team. It is the Lunala Balance team. It, I kind of just think of this as a very honest team, maybe even too honest. You're not getting a lot of mileage out of your restricted unless you get the Meteor Beam and like KO and Incineroar, which most of them will not let you do. Uh, you have to run a little bit faster because some Incineroar can just outspeed you and go for knockoff if you don't. So that's kind of tricky. Um, but you're going for Wide Guard, which is especially strong into things like Calyrex Ice Rider and Shadow Rider. But it's also not ideal because you're not really moving the game forward. Uh, you're just going for Wide Guard with your restricted and not hitting your really powerful attacks, which your restricted ideally wants to do. But I do think this team's a little honest, uh, like a really, really strong player might be able to go deep with it, but definitely not a team that I can foresee winning the World Championship when there's so much more powerful restricteds where you can play as well as you were playing with a Lunala, Lunala team, but end up going further just because the restricted carries games a bit more than Lunala does. This second team looks very similar outside of a couple Pokemon. There's a Rillaboom and a Clefairy over the uh, Amoongus and the Ursa Luna. So this team is focused less on a Meteor Beam Lunala. Sometimes they are, but oftentimes they are the Calm Mindset. This is a set that the Japanese players on ladder have been picking up on a little bit. It's a Calm Mindset to uh, essentially with the Clefairy's life do the Rillaboom's Grassy Terrain and Leftovers. You can get up to full HP and recover your Shadow Shield pretty consistently in the battle, especially with the combination of two Fake Outs and Follow Me. So that's really cool. You're trying to get as many, many Calm Minds up early game as possible to overwhelm your opponent later in the game, although you won't be doing a lot of offense early in the game with Rillaboom and Sonora Clefairy. Later in the game, you can clean up, but you do also have an Urshifu with a most often Choice Scarf or Focus Ash. Sometimes they will be the Terra Stellar, which is a set that has been popularizing on Calyrex. Shadow Rider teams as well, just as a bit of extra oomph on your close combats. And then Raging Bolt, of course, yeah, a Life Orb set on this team. Uh, I know that has been a set that and Booster Energy, but the Life Orb is cool because you can 
switch out a bit more consistently, play your Raging Bolt early game and be able to switch it out to go for Thunder Claps later in the game without worrying about losing your offensive boost that the booster energy uh, would otherwise provide and really just lock you in on the slot. Overall, I'm not sure if this is a team that the Japanese players have just kind of been having fun with on ladder, if they're really taking it seriously, but definitely worth noting that it is uh, something that they could be using at the World Championship, so I did want to shout it out here. The next restricted we're going to talk about is Zashin. So this is another Japanese team, this time for Zashin. Essentially, it's very physically oriented. I think literally only the Magmar has a special type attacking move on the team with Flamethrower and Clear Smog, but it's kind of a best of one ladder team. That's where it's done the strongest, but I'm you know, it could come and pop up at the World Championship with some small variations, a little more consistent ones. Clear Smog, Magmar, I think would probably be not the most effective unless you queue into like a Dondozo or something like that. So not the hugest fan of that, but the Magmar, pretty cool. Seeing that doing well in this regulation, at least on one team, Electabuzz, its counterpart, doing really well on a Trick Room team that we'll talk about later. But the general focus of the team here is to go for the Chen Pao's Sword of Ruin to boost up your Zashin's damage output especially after a Swords Dance, you're taking a knockout on pretty much everything. And then the rest of your team has really strong priority moves after the, uh, basically to double things up with Zashin plus a priority move will one hit KO pretty much everything in the metagame. So very offensive variant of Zashin here. The second Zashin team was innovated by Kean Campbell and is probably the team that I would expect to have the highest chance to make day two at the tournament. This is also a Swords Dance Zashin, but instead of a Sacred Sword set, you're going Terra Fairy Play Rough, which has the defensive benefit of shedding your ground and fire type weaknesses. And it's also really strong offensively. Not a lot of people know their plus one or even plus two, uh, especially not plus three Play Rough calculations on Zashin at this point. Uh, and Behemoth Blade, just a generally consistent option. I believe the plus two Terra Fairy will knock out Incineroar. I'm not sure about plus one. You can definitely use your opponent's lack of familiarity against a team like this to uh, just overwhelm them. So. The Umbreon is a very dedicated answer to Calyrex Ice Rider. You have Terra Water to resist the Glacial Lances, uh, You have, as well as the Urshifu Surging Strikes that's often on the team. You have Foul Play to deal with the Calyrex, that's an easy 2 KO with the Dark Stab. Yawn to pressure things to switch in and out, waste Trick Room turns, Taunt to stop Trick Room in the first place, and Snarl for anything like a Raging Bolt, which would otherwise be a decent answer, and then Safety Goggles to stop any Spore, which would uh, prevent you from being so irritating in Trick Room. So it's a really cool team with a lot of uh, offense, but ultimately it's a little bit on it. honest. That's my only complaint about it. You do really have to outread your opponent and position extremely well. So only the most polished players on this archetype will have a chance to do well at Worlds. I do think Kian is the front runner in that regard. So yeah. Next restricted I want to talk about is Coridon. We'll start with this Venusaur Coridon team, which has been taking names uh, under the name of Robbie Shage. He has been doing extremely well on Invictor Road Tours, pretty much any Limitless Tour or Cash Money Tour that you see online. He has been getting top eight and pretty much just, yeah, dominating the competition with a unconventional take on Coridon using Porygon 2, Ursluna, and Venusaur, very unused Pokemon. Chiyu and Raging Bolt are more or less par for the course on these sort of teams, but Venusaur definitely not the most popular grass type here. And uh, yeah, so overall the focus of the team is to use the Covert Cloak Venusaur to get Sleep Powders off on your opponent, Sludge Bomb, and Grass Knot especially strong on things like Rillaboom and Urshifu as well, knocking out the latter uh, Urshifu Surging Strike, I believe. You also have this really defensive Raging Bolt with Assault Vest using Volt Switch next to a Porygon to make sure you get a free switch to activate the Ursaluna's Flame Orb, which is really cool. You also have Substitute on this Ursaluna to make sure that uh, if an Incineroar is on the field, they either have to switch out to uh, get to Intimidate you later, and if they do that, you get a Substitute, and yeah, that also protects you from Fake Out. There's a lot of benefits to the Substitute over a Swords Dance, but it is a little... A problematic if they read you to substitute, but it does put a lot of mind games in the Incineroar, Incineroar's head where uh, they can't so easily just switch out. Uh, they do have to weigh the uh, pros and cons of substitute going up there. Overall, I'm not sure how many players except for Robbie are going to be bringing this team to world, but it is probably the second strongest Crydon team coming in, so I wanted to mention it. The strongest Crydon team coming into the world is one very similar to that which Wanma got, I think it was like 18th or like top 32, maybe just on the cusp of um, top 16 at NAIC. It is this Crydon team with Ogre Pond Cornerstone. Ogre Pond's really strong against something like a Pelipper, which can otherwise be kind of annoying for Coridon teams. You can just hit that very hard. It hits a lot of things on Calyrex Ice teams really super effectively without having to worry about Amoongus's uh, Rage Powder. That's really cool. Power Whip for the Urshifu Water, Ivy Cudgel for Pelipper, and then Ivy Cudgel hits Terra Fire, Calyrex Ice Rider in and out of Terra for super effective damage, doing about 75%, uh, assuming that they you don't get a critical hit. That's, there's always the chance for that, even if they switch and intimidate that you will get that. And you can always go for two because of the sturdy. So that's a really cool option. But the main differentiating thing uh, from this team to where it was at at NAIC is the 
presence of a Folk Sash Ditto. This makes the uh, Calyrex Ice Rider matchup even more favorable. So the Chi Yu and the Coridon's main job is to knock out an Amoongus early on so that uh, your opponent can just go for Trick Room and then you bring in your Focus Sash Ditto. Hopefully their Calyrex has taken a KO, which you can copy there as one attack boost. And then you just have a extremely versatile uh, Calyrex of your own along with a Coridon. And a lot of the Calyrex Ice Rider teams do not have the um, Pokemon in the back to be able to handle that. So it's a cool innovation beyond the just general strong aspects of the team. The Assault Vest Raging Bolt, you could run Life Orb to just go for absurdly strong Thunderclaps with Terra Electric and Protosynthesis. And then Chiyu has the Beads of Ruin to boost up the Fluttermain and the Raging Bolt's damage output, as well as a uh, supportive set with Snarl and Taunt to stop things like uh, Amoongus from sporing your whole team outside of the Follow Me from Ogre Pond. You don't have a lot of counterplay to that if they go for a huge Terrestrialization in front of the Coridon and the Chiyu's um, fire type moves, so that's a very strong defensive option. So overall, it's a very well-built team. It not only takes advantage of Coridon's uh, inherent strengths with Oracle Compulse and the sun that it sets up, but it also covers for its weakness matchups, uh, particularly something like a Kyogre uh, with the Ogre, Ogre Pond Cornerstone and the Raging Bolt, as well as the Calyrex Ice Rider with the Ogre Pond and the Ditto, so covers its matchups very well. The next restricted I want to go over is Terrapagos. First off, we have the Aurelian Sula uh, Grimmsnarl team with the light screen Grimmsnarl. Overall, the Grimmsnarl allows this team to play a lot bulkier than the earlier Choice Specs Terrapagos teams were. Uh, you have the Iron Hands, which is an interesting method to basically clear out Urshifu a little more effectively than Incineroar as a fake out Pokemon is able to do, as well as you can't really run Rillaboom when your Terrapagos is Terra Shift. Uh, going for the Terrestrialization is going to clear its grassy terrain off the field. So Iron Hands is definitely a smart call to just wild charge that and take a KO. The Grimmsnarl's light screen reflect allows the team to play very bulky. And the Thunder Wave uh, additionally means you don't have to run a Choice Scarf on something like the Urshifu or the Chiyu, so I like that. And then Foul Play just covers your uh, Calyrex Ice Rider matchup really well, as, as well as being an option to force Terrastalization out of Calyrex Shadow Rider to let your Terrapagos knock it out. I do want to point out the synergy between the Beads of Ruin on the Chiyu and the Terrapagos' damage output. If you don't go for uh, Terra Stella, your Terra Star Storms are hitting really hard in Beads of Ruin, just taking knockouts and things like Amoongus, which, which would otherwise be able to uh, really just threaten you with a Spore, as well as allowing for the Star Storms after you've gone for the Terrestrialization to do a bit more damage. You're only getting, I think, a 1.2 times boost on it instead of the 1.5 normal boost you would normally get, which is an odd interaction with Terrapagos, but you can definitely get that damage way back up there again with the Chiyu's Beads of Ruin. Next up is the a little bit more outdated Tailwind version of the team that I, I think Nails and uh, Suika were using to good effect earlier in the season, as well as Andrew Zhang. So it's a strong team, essentially, instead of the Grimmsnarl as a support, you have the Tornadus. Amoongus um, is going to be your redirector to protect the Terrapagos, and then Ogre Pond Cornerstone is something that can force a Terrestrialization out from your Calyrex Ice Rider, as well as just being another redirection Pokemon with a with basically a Focus Sash, so that's cool. Same elements of the Chi with the Focus Sash, it's going to be relatively unchanging, and then the Booster Energy Fluttermane to go for Icy Wind combinations with the Chi Yu Ogre Pond and the Terrapagos, so that's going to be on most teams. Uh, you see it with the Urshifu on the previous team, but this team's a little bit outdated, and maybe they will swap out a couple of members, but overall, haven't been seeing a lot of the Tailwind Terrapagos recently with the Choice Specs. Next up is the Calm Mind variant. There's a lot of different uh, Pokemon for support that can be on this team. I've seen Clefairy, uh, Raging Bolt is a good offensive one. Generally, the offensive Pokemon will be Raging Bolt, Urshifu, and Rillaboom. Rillaboom is less common just because of the anti-synergy with the Terra Shift, Terrestrialization, just shedding your Rillaboom's grassy terrain. That's kind of annoying, but it does pair up really well with the Leftover set because you can get your Terra Shell back active so you can go for the um, basically just make sure that you're at full HP and taking minimal damage most of the time. This definitely has its pros and cons with Covert Cloak to where with the Covert Cloak you can ignore Fake Out. You can't get Fake Out uh, close combat pinned as annoyingly but you are uh, losing a little bit of the utility of leftovers there. So beyond that uh, a lot of different supports. We have Screamtail that's kind of a popular one. It got top 8 at uh, North American Internationals. I've also seen Volcarona with Rage Powder Rocky Helmet Terra Water to counter Urshifu which would otherwise be Kind of annoying, uh, they can't lock into close combat in front of your Rage Powder because it will be not super effective into the bug type, but if they lock into the Surging Strike you can go for Terra Water, Rage Powder, even not Terra Water, and if you just go for the Rage Powder they are very likely to get burned as well as taking 50% of their HP from the Rocky Helmet, so lots of cool options there. I do think there's a lot of room to innovate on the Calm Mind Terrapagos teams because otherwise uh, they're not that strong into a lot of the teams in the metagame, that's why they have largely seen a drop off, as well as the high skill floor uh, of doing well with this team. Now we're moving into the last B tier restricted, and that is Kyogre. So the Kyogre teams are pretty bulky this metagame, there is a couple of very high bar offensive Kyogre teams, but it hasn't really centralized to one composition. A lot of them have, will have something like a Tornadus plus Goldengo, 
maybe a choice band urshifu uh, that is one composition but it's not especially centralized this team uh is the more defensive variant of the tailwind teams with basically Shilang tang's top eight at euic or at naac it's basically using the assault vest kyogre with the iron jugulus as a tailwind mode that has snarl to beat Kalrax shadow rider that's pretty cool the choice scarf urshifu as an offensive core and then a very defensive Firewater Grass Core Completion with the Wo Chen and the Incineroar. Uh, Wo Chen is able to Pollen Puff your Kyogre with the Assault Vest back up to full HP as well as weaken the damage output of physical attacks with the Tablets of Ruin. In combination with the Assault Vest, the Kyogre is very difficult to clear off the field, especially when you're Pollen Puffing it back up. You can Elite Seed, Assault Things 1v1, and Ruination Things to put them in Water Spout range because I believe you are faster than the Kyogre so that you can get the Pollen Puff off first so you can water spout the same turn that you palm puff yourself but it also means you can ruination something and then knock it out with water spout so i do like that a lot then the incineroar is pretty standard will-o-wisp to pressure a terrestrialization out of a uh, calrex ice rider basically if they're terra fire you can force them to terror with the will-o-wisp at which point you can just water spout them later in the game for a knockout and then last up on the team is the grim snarl which is really focused on getting the reflect and light screen up early game depending on which is best against your opponent's team and then a thunder wave to allow the kyogre to outspeed them and not have to take a hit before it goes for water spout as well as just uh with the long pace of these battles having the option to uh, get a couple free turns due to paralysis is definitely appreciated and moving on to the next kyogre team and one i maybe expect to see a little bit more at worlds even though it is much more volatile i think it got first and third and maybe it was just third on ladder uh this kyogre team is extremely bulky it's a leftovers calm mindset with origin pulse so you are gambling on origin pulse as your main source of damage but the uh, sheer bulk of this team means you're able to get a lot of free turns to click it, which can minimize the luck of that. Uh, essentially, the Calm Mindset makes you really strong in to even things like Raging Bolt that would otherwise be a solid answer to it. You can go for Terra Grass against Electric moves, and if they go for a Draco Meteor, they're doing very minimal damage after the Calm Mind, and you'll heal up a lot of it up um, after a couple of turns with Leftovers and Rillaboom. This moveset notably has a weakness to Water uh, and anything that goes for Terra Water, so you have the Raging Bolt with the Boost Energy, to KO things like that with the Thunderbolt and the Thunderclap. Notably, Urshifu Water uh, is able to go for Terra Water Surging Strikes and two at KO the Kyogre a lot of the time, so you can just go for a Thunderclap into that with the Booster Energy. You don't even need to expend the Terra to do that. Grimmsnarl completes the team, once again, spreading Light Screen Reflect and Thunder Wave over the course of a long battle. All of those are gonna have a huge impact, so I do think it's a very well-built team. The team can go to time a lot, or at least stall battles uh, and really just expend a lot of mental energy, so it is a very difficult team to pilot over the course of an eight round tournament in day one. So we'll see how it does. I do think it'll definitely have a few pilots going very deep, even making day two. Uh, we will see though. Next up, we have the Zamazenta compositions that are largely innovated by uh, Eternal Snowman, Michael Zhang. Uh, he really favors the wide guard set, which I'm inclined to think is a lot better. The iron defense set, we'll go into those teams next, but definitely have a very distinct flavor compared to the iron defense team. So you have the a lot of unconventional Pokemon. Uh, we've seen Tyranitar. We've also seen a Chandelure sometimes in the Moltres spot. And a Latios with a Terra Fire most recently. I do think these teams take advantage of uh, Zamazetta's kind of unique quality to just be able to force an Incineroar out or force it to Terra uh, better than pretty much any other team in the metagame at beating Incineroar. You have the Moltres to handle that with the uh, Black Glasses, Fiery Wrath, as well as Foul Play to do a lot of damage to the Incin after it Terras, as well as a Chandelure sometimes to knock it out with Shadow Ball. And then in newer compositions, you have the Tyranitar with Knock Off to do very similarly. So that is the Wide Guard Zamazenta variants. Let's go into the Iron Defense one. So there is one team, there's definitely a lot of variations between them. I'm not entirely sure where people are landing on for worlds, but we do see a lot of the Fluttermane with the Thunder Wave to buy turns for the Zamazenta to set up, as well as just outspeed and knock out its counters. Uh, Rillaboom with the uh, Grassy Terrain allows for healing for Zamazenta, which is very much appreciated. While also not being super passive, it can ignore Amoongus and knock out its partners, which can be kind of annoying for Zamazenta. Just a Amoongus sitting on the field and sporing you while you're trying to set up Iron Defenses can be kind of annoying. Galarian Moltres and Chen Pao similarly trying to answer the uh, Terra Ghost that people deliberately put on their teams to beat the Zamazentas. And the last Pokemon on the team is the Ditto, so you don't have Wide Guard on this Zamazenta, so your matchup against Kalrax Shadow Rider can be kind of dicey. We do have two Dark Types here to handle it, but it can always go for a Rogue Terra type that isn't weak to the Terra Fairy, which could be kind of problematic for you, so that's why the Ditto is here to go for the Choice Scarf um, Imposter, and suddenly you'll be your opponent's Calyrex, and if they've taken a boost, you might be like a plus one special attack and plus one speed. Calyrex with the Choice Scarf and sweep, Reverse Sweep them with the Astro Barrage. So it's a very cool set. Uh, we've seen it on other other compositions like Justin Burns' team, but the Zamazenta teams definitely make good use of it as well. Now going into what I believe to be the third best restricted going into Worlds, Calyrex Ice Rider. I do think this team that Alex Underhill got top 16 at NAIC with 
will be very popular, at least, at least variants of it. I think a player got second place on Battle Stadium Ladder with a very similar team as well. Um, so yeah, basically it centralizes on a decorate Smeargle to underspeed Calyrex Ice and Blood Moon and allow them to set up uh, while also dealing a ton of damage with their very powerful spread moves. And then you have a Ferrigarath, uh, sometimes an Ndidi to block priority. You can't fake out to basically stall the Trick Room tur turns, that's very appreciated. And Annihilate with Choice Scarf Final Gambit to take a knockout and allow, allow a free switch in uh, on the first turn of Trick Room. And then an Electabuzz, which can follow me um, away any attacks. Taunt a, like an Incineroar that's trying to taunt your Trick Room Pokemon, faint during Trick Room to effectively uh, stop any Protects, a Pseudo Urshifu, and then Volt Switch out on the first turn of Trick Room while you're setting it up so that you uh, do not uh, let your sweepers get knocked out on switch. Not sure how much of this teams was predicated on the surprise factor, but we'll definitely see some of it. Uh, some people attempt to make day two with it at Worlds. So this team by Patrick Connors was really focused on using both the Calyrex and the Urshifu Rapid Strike as offensive options, as well as the Booster Energy Raging Bolt. This was innovated earlier on in the season and has persisted as one of the strongest, most versatile answers. This team has been around for a while, but definitely one of the stronger, more long-lasting compositions of Calyrex Ice Rudder that we've seen in this uh, restricted G. Lastly, we have the Fede Campo team that completely abandoned Incineroar, which is conventionally seen as one of the strongest partners on the Calyrex Balance team. This one's definitely more offensive with an Ogre Pawn cornerstone, so no Amoongus, no Incineroar, some of its strongest partners, but we have Follow Me Ogre Pawn, as well as a Fake Out Rillaboom to take that, uh, basically fill in those gaps. We still have the very strong Booster Energy Raging Bolt, a Choice Scarf, I well, actually thought it was Choice Scarf, but it is a Focus Sash Urshifu here to play in Trick Room a little bit more effectively. You do have two Trick Room setters. Lastly is the Ferrigraph, which is really solid priority blocking. Incineroar can't go for Fake Outs to stop your Trick Rooms or really just stifle your Trick Room turns. And you also have a Shadow Ball to knock out Calyrex Shadow Rider if they can't Terra. And if it, they can, you can kind of just read that and go for the Hyper Voice, do a lot of damage, and do even more with the Throat Spray next turn. Helping Hand is also very strong, especially at like... The, if Trick Room ends, you have the Raging Bolt in the field, you just go for Terra Electric, Booster Energy, Thunderclap, boosted by Helping Hand, taking a lot of unexpected KOs there, so it's a very interesting team. Uh, some people have questioned where the Zamazenta matchup is, so I do think we'll see some variations of this at the World Championship, um, but yeah, there is one team that I've seen with a Clefairy over, I, maybe it was the Ferrigraph, and then I saw a, I want to say it was a Iron Valiant over the Rillaboom as a supporter. I'm definitely going to be tracking if the Incineroar Amoongus compositions do better or these ones lacking it uh, that are innovating a little bit more are able to reach a higher finish overall in the tournament. Next up, we have the Maridon teams, and I do think it feels like there are two distinct types of Maridon teams coming to the World Championship. There are the uh, holdouts on Terra Electric, running the Choice Specs Terra Electric set, just taking crazy knockouts with Volt Switch and Electro Drift, using Chiyu's uh, Beads of Ruin to even further boost that, as well as having a Discharge partner with Choice Scarf. It's a very strong team, doesn't have a lot of holes in it, and it was able to, with aggressive play, get to top four at the North American International Championship. So I think aggressive players are definitely still going to be favoring this, but People who are more interested on a more balanced uh, approach with the Maridon that doesn't have to make as many reads will be switching over to this next composition. So the Terra Fairy here is mainly focused on beating things like Raging Bolts and Iron Hands that would otherwise be really strong against you, so it's really strong into the mirror. Sometimes we see the Whimscott switch out for a Grim Snarl with Light Screen and Reflect to play a little bit more of a balanced, slower pace game. Maridon does have a lot of natural bulk just looking at its stats, so it can take advantage of these screens and get multiple hits off. Uh, and this is really strong against a bulkier team because you don't need the Whimsicott's bulk anyways. Or you don't need its speed control anyways. So the Grimmsnarl applying bulk uh, with the Reflect and Leftover as well as just being able to Thunder Wave things and really give you the speed control you need anyways. Again, something like an Urshifu is very cool. The next major change on these teams is the presence of Ogre Pawn Hearth Flame. We've also seen Entei on these, but basically the focus here is having a strong Fire type. That can knock out a Rillaboom on switch in. So the biggest counterplay that a lot of teams have against Maridon is just lead a Rillaboom against it. So if you already have an Ogre Pawn or even an Entei that can't even be fake outed on the field, yeah, you're able to play a lot more aggressive of a game and really just punish them for trying to deal with your restricted. Next we have Calor Shadow Rider, which is the Pokemon I believe is going to be winning the World Championship this year. Uh, this set is, on this team is probably not going to be the most popular, but we will definitely see a lot of players using it in the day one at least. This team is really tricky to play against. On one hand, you do have a friend card mouse hold with Follow Me next to the Calyrex Shadow Rider. It is choice spec, so it's gonna be really hard to get past the mouse hold, uh, both its Follow Me and its friend guard to prevent the Calyrex Shadow Rider from just sweeping you out on lead. 
Uh, so that's really cool. You can go for your choice specs, Astral Barrages, start stacking up as one boost. That's a very strong option for sure. But a secondary mode that the team can go for is use Toxic Spikes and Poison Gas on Weezing very early on to spread poison so that your Don Dozo can uh, come in, protect, stall, uh, as well as with leftovers to make sure that you are getting as many chips of poison possible on your opponent to sweep them up with Earthquake after. And as soon as the Don Dozo goes down, if things are even not even knocked out, but really low, the Calyrex Shadow Rider can come in and take a quick knockout with the Choice Specs Astro Barrage. This team might seem really tricky to play against, but I promise it gets even worse. Once you have knocked out the Don Dozo, the Calyrex Shadow Rider is probably still standing, and then the Tatsugiri comes out. So the Tatsugiri set is really difficult to deal with in combination with Poison, so you can essentially just alternate Counter and Mirror Code if you're down to a 1v1 at the end of the game, which Don Dozo and Calyrex Shadow Rider can do pretty consistently, uh, and then your opponent will either faint from Poison or knock themselves out with the appropriate Counter move. So it's a really difficult team to play against. Uh, a lot of people, uh, I think if this team hadn't been flashed on ladder and kind of like spiked the ladder, might have been a very strong team coming into the Worlds, but a lot of people have figured out what it is doing and figured out their game plan so i think going to be a little less effective but it wouldn't surprise me to see at least one person making it to day two with this this mian Shao team is maybe a little outdated but probably still going to be pretty strong the focus of the men Shao is after the uh, calyrex shadow rider gets a nasty plot or a calm mind up and you have your really strong astro barrage that is primed a lot of people are going to use wide guard as their way to beat it or simply like an incineroar go for a knockoff against you but mian Shao handles both of those pretty well that's inner focus, so it is immune to fake out itself, so Incineroar can't stop you from going for a move there. You can close combat the Incineroar, either fo forcing it to tear Ghost or tear Water, at which point a Nasty Plot might just knock them out. Uh, and then you have Faint into a Wide Guard user, essentially, that will break the Wide Guard and allow the Astral Barrage to hit through. And if you are in a mirror against another Calyrex Shadow Rider or really any Pokemon with a spread move, you can go for Wide Guard to increase your odds of winning that mirror. I don't think Clefairy will be unique to these teams. I think there's still going to be the uh, Incineroar, Rillaboom, Tornadus, and Urshifu teams that are similar in composition to this but definitely play very differently but I did just want to shout out the Men Chow team because it has been kind of flying under the radar I'm not sure if its strongest uh, pilots I think Siri, uh, Luca Cerebelli, one of the strongest Italian players who I have up there expecting to cut uh, I think he was pretty high on this team not sure if he still will be uh, so we will see but I do think this combo of Clefairy and Calyrex Shadow Rider is definitely going to do well at Worlds this year. All right, the last team I want to cover is this Calyrex Shadow Rider team that has been taking names by the Japanese online. So this is the most modern version of Calyrex Shadow Rider Balance. We have shifted over to a Terra ter Normal set to win the mirror, essentially, if they're themselves not Terra Normal, which if they are, you kind of just go Psychic to try and outspeed them and hit them with a Life Orb Nasty plotted up Psychic for a knockout. It's kind of a tricky mirror, but uh, you're definitely doing your best to try and win that. Beyond that is just very focused on supporting the Calyrex with the Incineroar on the Rillaboom as a uh, pivoting chain. We have a Follow Me Pokemon, sometimes it's Amoongus or Clefairy. Um, that's really effective at protecting the Calyrex and then the more offensive teams will go with the Ogre Pond Heart Flame which applies um, additional pressure. You can go for a Terra Fire to get the Embody Aspect Attack Boost, switch into Rillaboom and knock out an Urshifu with a Grassy Glide. Choice Urshifu can be one of Calyrex Shadow Rider's greatest enemies so having something like this to handle it is really appreciated as well as having a booster energy thunderclap to do similar. So I think it's a very well-rounded team. It's also been using a uh, Terra Stellar Urshifu Rapid Strike to go for really strong surging strikes one time with these Terra Stellar, but also importantly, a strong uh, close combat. That's really important. Something like a Raging Bolt, which might be able to take an Astro Barrage pretty well if it's a Salt Vest and be able to beat you 1v1 otherwise if you didn't have a, a Terra Stellar. But with the Terra, you can just go for the really powerful close combat into anything from a Rillaboom, a Terrastalized Amoongus or something like that, or a Raging Bolt, and take some clean knockouts that way. So that is going to do it for me, all the strongest teams coming into the World Championship. So that's going to do it for my overview of the top teams coming into the World Championship. Hope you guys enjoy this as a resource and are now prepared to watch the World Championship. As I am, uh, I imagine most of the competitors are already aware of a lot of these teams, but uh, hopefully this improves the viewer experience for some of y'all. So hope you guys enjoy the video. Please subscribe to the channel. If you did, definitely more. Uh, competitive content on the way especially with regulation g starting up in full swing after the world championship so subscribe for that and yeah with all that being said peace y'all